What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV and today we're going to show you the best things to do on Barbados Island. Let's do it. First up, here we are at Rockley Beach, one of the most popular beaches on the island. As with many of the beaches on the southwest side of Barbados, you will notice they have that deep blue Gatorade color water that everyone loves so much. The horse racetrack is nearby and in the mornings they bring the horses down here for a swim. So if you're lucky, you'll see that. And another one of those beaches is Pebbles Beach. Right here I stayed at the Radisson, but also they have several hotels like the Hilton Resort nearby. So this is a great area of Barbados to get your accommodation. All right, so I got a chicken sandwich here with hot sauce. Now here we are at St. Lawrence Gap, an area where you can do nightlife, restaurants, bars, all along this little road. Again, St. Lawrence Gap is on the southwest side of the island. That's pretty much the side we're exploring for the white sand beaches, but then we'll go north and we'll go to the east side as well. But I just wanted to familiarize you guys with this side of the island. They also have Miami Beach here, Osteen's Fish Fry. On a Friday night is another thing to do around the St. Lawrence Gap area. So this is the main place to be for nightlife. So when you come out here to St. Lawrence Gap, you come out to the restaurant called Mimosas, and they've got turtles swimming here. I've seen about five or six just swimming right off the shore, but it's called Mimosas. I would suggest you come here for a brunch, and you know, of course, when you get a brunch, you're gonna be tempted to get a mimosa, but there's gonna be turtles swimming around, so you're gonna be in a great mood. Lots of sunshine at this particular location. Now there is a little beach that you can hang out there, although the day I was here, the waves were really pumping, so it wasn't the best day to get in the water at this location. And if you wrap around the south side of the island and go towards the east, you'll find Crane Beach. They have a few hotels out here up along these cliffs. So a really beautiful scenic beach, more relaxing on this side of the island. Now here we are in Bridgetown. This is the capital of Barbados, founded in 1628. There's a population of around 100,000 people. And for those of you who are fans of Rihanna, yes, this is where she's from, Bridgetown. More specifically, St. Michael. Bridgetown has a nice river walk that you can do uh, in the morning or in the evening time. And what we're gonna do now is head up toward the north part of the island. This here is the Morgan Lewis Windmill. It's very photogenic up here. Nice place to take a picture and get some history about the island. So here we are at St. John Parish Church. We're gonna walk around and show you the beautiful views here. This beautiful church looks out towards the Atlantic Ocean. This is on the east side of the island. For those of you who do not know, Barbados was a major sugar plantation island. And back in the early 1700s, sugar was as valuable as oil is today. But walking around this church here, you definitely get the charm of the old world. It really feels like you're going back in time when you're on the east side of Barbados. Yeah, so here we are at Bathsheba now. We're at the Sea View Bar, and you've got a beautiful view behind me, as you can see. Bathsheba is so beautiful right here on the east side of the island. That's the Atlantic Ocean right over there. Just to give you an idea of how Barbados is, the east side is much more lush than the west side. The west side's a bit more arid, so expect to see a lot more vegetation and thick jungle kind of atmosphere. Although, unlike most West Indy Islands, Barbados does not have very many mountains. We are at the Andromeda botanical garden here in Bathsheba so we're gonna go around here and see what kind of plants they have in this collection. Being that it's so lush here you're gonna see a wide variety of tropical plants. Yeah so while you're here in the botanical garden you can sit on the seat and just think about life. And the ticket to get in here is around 15 US dollars that's 30 Barbadian dollars. There is going to be another botanical garden on this list which is considered one of the top things to do on the island so do stay tuned for that. This is just a botanical garden and something to do when you're in Bathsheba. All right so here we are now at Bathsheba Beach. If you look right behind me you can see there's surfers in here so if you're someone who likes to surf this might just be where you want to go Bathsheba. I'll be honest with you, the vibes over here are totally different than the other side of the island. The west side is more touristic, whereas the east side is more laid back, more down to earth, a lot more rugged and jungly, like I said, but 
A lot of people really like that. They do yoga over here, lots of surfing. These are for people who want to get their feet in the mud, get their feet in the sand, and really live that down-to-earth Barbados vibe. We talked about surfing already, but I want to highlight it a bit more. There are a couple beaches on the island like this one that really stand out. The south side also has some surfing. It just depends on where the swells are coming from, but because the Atlantic Ocean is right here, this is the first island to catch all those swells. And being that we're on the east side here, this is basically the front end of all of those. And being that this is on the east side, this is of course where the highest swells are gonna be when they arrive. Many consider Barbados to be the best island for surfing in the Caribbean. All right guys, here we are at Hunt's Garden. This is actually considered the most beautiful place on earth. At least that's what the sign says. Well, actually the sign says most enchanting place on earth and it certainly is very enchanting. And when you go inside there, you will notice this place is very unique because it's built in like a little hole or a canyon area and they've just put tons of different plants in here. It was actually built in the 1950s and there's still an old house here. Ticket admission to get in here is 20 US dollars and it is worth it. By the way, guys, as we continue to show you around Barbados, I want to let you know we are island hopping across the Caribbean. I have done several different islands in the last two weeks that I will be posting St. Kitts coming up as well as St. Lucia. There's many different islands around here. This is number 11 on the Caribbean island for the year. So we've got lots of videos to look forward to if you plan to island hop in the Caribbean like me. I will put links to those videos in the comments and the description below if you want to watch some more of those beautiful islands. And I will be making a video highlighting my favorite Caribbean islands once I've done them all. Well, at least the Caribbean island countries. This is a look at that house that's now been turned into a cafe and lounging area. And you can't really come to Barbados without doing some rum tasting, now can you? Reason being is they say rum was actually invented and created here on Barbados. The number one Barbados brand is Mount Gay, although there are a few that you can try. And I learned a lot about rum while doing the rum tasting, such as the difference between the clear one and the brown one. Also the aging process, the barrels, all of that is very interesting and you get to pick which one you really like. So now here we are at the Animal Flower Cave. The Animal Flower Cave is on the northern part of the island. The entrance fee is 40 Barbados dollars for adults and 20 Barbados for children. And you actually go down these stairs and you arrive in the cave. Right there at the cave, you'll notice the ocean comes right up to it and they say, Right down below there, it just drops off like a cliff. They have big sharks they've caught there, and they've seen big sharks in that water just right off the Animal Flower Cave. But very interesting to go in here. They also have a little pool lagoon that you can swim in. I would say it's definitely worth coming up here if you plan to go to the northern part of the island. And this is a look at that mermaid pool. At least that's what it looks like, right? All right, now what do you guys say? We head over to the west side for a sunset. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like when the sun goes down. This is definitely something people like to do, which is sun worship. Seems like a common trend all across the Caribbean island. After a long day exploring and hanging out at the beach, people like to watch the sun go down and just really relax with an ice cold drink of choice, whatever that may be for you. So after you get a good sunset, you gotta prepare for the next day and do some more adventurous stuff. So here we are now at Harrison's Cave Eco Adventure Park, where we're gonna go on a tram. They also have zip lining and rum tasting here. So definitely get around to that. I also got a new hat, Barbados. Yeah, so now here we are in Harrison's Cave. They call it the heart of Barbados because really it is right there in the middle of the island. And you go deep down into this cave in one of these trams. Don't worry, it's not dangerous at all. And you get to see what the cave looks like down here. You'd be surprised how much water there is underneath this island. And you get to see it firsthand when you go on this cave tour here at Harrison's. It's a bit like a Disneyland ride. The ticket price is $57 for adults, $39 for kids. 
I noticed there was a lot of people who were on the cruise that came up here to do this, but if you're just doing a tour, you can also get this. Maybe you can get a better price online, but that was the rate that I saw. If you wanted to do zip lining or do the challenge course, you can also lump that all together or do two or three activities. That might be a better value, I would say, if you're gonna come all the way up here. But yeah, the cave tour does remind me a bit of the Pirates of the Caribbean, except you don't get wet and you're not on a boat. And if you guys are enjoying this video so far, consider giving it a like and subscribing to this channel. And if you wanna get updated about those Caribbean videos that are coming up, be sure to turn on that subscription bell to get notified. But yeah, this beautiful cave here, once you're done, the tour takes around 40 minutes, then you head out, you can do some rum tasting. Just be aware that drinking and driving on Barbados is not a good idea. It's obviously not a good idea ever to do that, but rum has a tendency to make people tired also, so you can get kind of groggy. But if you're not driving, then definitely help yourself, right? All right, what do you guys say we get out there and do some more exploring? So if any of you guys have actually seen the movie Outer Banks, this is actually the Outer Banks film set. So right here behind me, run down building, but that's where it is. Outer Banks is a Netflix series. I came out here to check it out, see what it was. There's not much you can really do here. It seems like it's under repair, but some people who are a fan of the show want to know. Here we are now at Carlisle Bay. You can see there's a lot of beach around this area here. According to TripAdvisor, Carlisle Bay is the number one best thing to do on the island. At least it has the most reviews. So take that for what you want. But I would say it's right next to Pebbles Beach, Rockley Beach. I personally prefer Rockley or Pebbles over this area just because there's more crowding here. But either way, let's keep going. And talk about some really important things that you guys will want to know when arriving in Barbados. Such as the currency and some interesting facts and the official language. Now let's talk about the arrival process into Barbados. So when you arrive into Barbados, you will need to fill out an arrival form. You can either do that before you arrive, which helps get you front of the line in the immigration process, or you can do it at the airport at one of their machines. But once you arrive here, you'll realize that it's about a 25 minute drive to Bridgetown, whether it's by taxi or rental car. I arrived and got a rental car, although they were mostly sold out, so take that into consideration. Probably uh, best to book ahead of time. There were taxis available when I stepped out of the airport, so that was good. But uh, yeah, it's pretty smooth sailing. It took about 25 to 30 minutes to get our bags, but I arrived on an evening flight. I guess it's a little bit better in the daytime as far as getting uh, taxis or rental cars and getting your bags quicker. So there you go. And now for some interesting facts. So one thing that I would say is do not wear camouflage here. Don't wear camouflage shorts, shirts, boxers, swim trunks, none of that. It is illegal here and that's no joke. They did say they might be doing away with that law, but as of right now, you cannot wear camouflage in this country. Yes, this is where Rihanna comes from. She comes from Bridgetown. She's very famous here. Also, they have a fish fry here at Osteen's every Friday night. You definitely want to check that out. It's the land of the flying fish fish fry. <laughs> also, they say here that in Barbados, this is where rum was invented. So this is a rum island. Do try Mount Gay rum when you're here or any of the rum brands. Also, Barbados is a country all in of itself. It is independent. It used to be part of Britain. Now it is completely independent. The population here is around 260,000 people. And the official language is English. The currency here is the Barbados dollar and it's two of those to one US dollar. So if you have one US dollar, it equals two Barbados dollars.